Welcome, guys, to episode 14 of the weekly. And we are all here. Sorry for starting a little late. Some Infinity War discussion was going on behind the scenes, but thank you for joining us on the show. And uh, with me, of course, are our usual host, starting off with Mr. Warren Bowman from BW1.com. How's it going, man? Uh, let's do this. All right. And next up is the one and only Mr. Juan Bagnell from Some Gadget Guy. Hey, I've got my coffee. I'm ready to chat. Let's do this. And finally, the man who went into Infinity War and is still alive, Black Iron underscore man. Sam, how's it going, man? Oh, Where is he going, going with this one? <laughs> easy to be alive. Easy to be alive when you were never in it. We'll see. Oh, he's, yeah. he's throwing shade at you already. We haven't I'm, even started I'm just, yet, man. I'm just throwing the roll safe out there. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's let's get started. We don't have a uselessness of this week, but if it's anything. Um, you guys can throw it up. Uh, if you guys have anything in the comments or uh, in the chat, let us know. But we'll start off with uh, the iPhone SE2 rumors. Um, this was posted on Pocket Now. The link is there. And it says uh, uh, there's a video, at least, of the iPhone SE2, very similar in design as the iPhone SE. Uh, but it comes with a headphone jack. Now, is this just a Chinese knockoff? Uh, that is in this case, or is Apple walking back the uh, headphone jack or just making a segmented uh, SKU system? What do you guys think about this? I'll start off with you, Juan, because you look perturbed right there. Uh, I'm just oh, no, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm actually very positive on this being true. Okay. Um, Apple is a company that likes to make money, and I don't think they would want to spend too much time or effort redesigning a product that's been around since you know the transition from the iphone 4 to the iphone 5. so i don't think you need to reinvent the wheel there you you basically just redesign the machining so that you can give it a glass back and you pop in some charge coils and you call it a day so i think it's very likely that this could maintain um uh, a headphone jack just as we might see you at least one more year or two of iPhones that still have home buttons. You know, you're still going to keep making iPhone 8s to fulfill sort of uh, mid-ranger uh, price points. You might as well have your cheap little iPhone um, continue to use a headphone jack, especially for its target on uh, lower cost and developing uh, 3G and 4G regions. You know, you, you're not going to sell many dongles there. You might as well just build it into the phone. Sorry, Richie A said Apple lost its courage. <laughs> Because that is exactly why why they took out the headphone jack. There was courage to do that, but they lost. Well, and it. also that huge investment they made in buying Beats. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Sam, any Ooh. thoughts? Not really. I'm not really interested in that particular device. I know <laughs> that there's a whole sector of people who are, and having a headphone jack would probably help them with that transition. They really don't want to burn the um, the people who don't have the money to spend on the X's or the eights of the world. They would mm -hmm. rather. I'm like they care something. about those people. No, they, 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 they do care. This, this move, they this care about everyone's it. money. money. They care exactly. about everyone's yeah. money. Because so, if you go, I mean, if you go with the reports that. That, that, that are saying that uh, iPhone 10 sales are really not that good. Plus, it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Apple opened a factory in India to produce, guess what? iPhone 6S, their best-selling iPhone yeah. out there. So and also you, the fact that they've dropped from the top three in China as well. So they, there is that kind of pressure there to, to make people happy <laughs> and keep buying, uh, spending money on your device. Yeah. So I think it, it goes to play. But anyway, any thoughts on, on the device itself, uh, Warren? Meh. Nah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that, that, I mean, it's, nah. it's an iPhone. It's going to have the same. It, 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 I don't. I don't really have a feeling towards this at all. The device is targeted towards me, or really towards any and, and anyone in the U.S. market outside of people that are looking for really cheap phone, look, look, looking for a really cheap iPhone. But if you're looking, you know, to spend really a lot less money on an iPhone, you might as well get something used that's better than what that's going to be, and and, and probably roughly know. get around I mean, the same price. When the SE came out, it came out just in that window before the uh, the iPhone 7. And I think it was the superior iPhone. It's built better. Apple knew their way around the manufacturing quirks. It had the 6S and the 6S camera built into it. It got better battery life for having the lower resolution screen. I think there are arguments to be made for little phones. Uh, an iPhone 5 sized device rocking more modern internals could be a get for a lot of people out there who don't want a super massive you know, chunk of iPhone in their pocket. Okay. Um, 
anything else on this uh this apple bad boy seems like no one's really excited about that news well I mean, this, this is what's this is what's kind of interesting though is like we people keep saying like look at how many head, headlines we see about people who aren't interested in an se2 and yet we keep publishing a ton of stories about the se2 and those stories keep getting a ton of clicks I think that just as in Android land, we're seeing really interesting conversations in the two to four hundred dollar price category. Supposedly flagship phones rule the day, but there are all these people out there that seem genuinely interested in entry level and mid ranger phones. This is an opportunity for Apple to also fulfill a smaller but still passionate demand on people who like me. I, the iPhone five is the best thing they've ever built. I, I, it's the best iPhone. It's the best manufactured. It's the cleanest design. It's it's the best combination of hardware to software where iOS was originally designed to be used on a smaller screen. This phone ticks all the check marks. I like using my iPhone SE. I don't like using anything else in iOS land. So I, I think that this is one of those things where enthusiasts are going to say not good enough, not worth it, thumbs down. And a bunch of people are going to walk into Apple stores and go, oh, how cute. <laughs> and then buy one. Oh, so that's a good point. It's, it's like, this is not all a phone for hear. us. Well, all it's a phone I, for me, but it's not a phone for all for I hear is all I hear is small hand world problems. That's all I hear. Hey man, I am I am oh, peak of the bell man. curve average, which means forty nine percent of humanity is even smaller than I am. So we'll all do just fine with an iPhone SE two. Anyway, let's move on to other news before we start talking about hands. Um, T Mobile and Sprint. Getting married again, or trying to. Uh, merger talks are on the way, and it looks like they've come up with a valuation. It's about twenty-six billion dollars, which is you know kind of small for me. Then again, I'm used to seeing all these big numbers from like Netflix, and you know. I don't. I don't think Sprint is worth that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam would know. Sam knows exactly how much Sprint is worth. Like nah, that's he did, he worth did, zero. He did it. Zero. A, he did a perfect evaluation about Sprint several years ago. Yeah. So CNBC is reporting T-Mobile is closing in on a deal to merge Sprint that with a value uh, Sprint that will value Sprint's market cap price at six six dollars and fifty cents per share. So of course T-Mobile will be the one who should be acquiring Sprint because that's the way it's supposed to be. Makes sense. It's the way it should be. Yeah. yeah. Totally. yeah and be. Um, I don't know now. No details uh, in particular how SoftBank's um, uh, aspect is going to play in this. But then again, SoftBank owns eighty five percent of Sprint. Um, so we'll see how it all pans out. But it's going to be interesting how it all um, comes together. Uh, and also, um, just in the article I just saw, last week, Comcast and Charter, um, two largest U.S. cable companies, announced an extended partnership agreement to allow each other to develop products and services. So they are finding a way to also... It, mergers and acquisitions are going on again, man. Like, everyone's trying to eat people yeah. up. It's the season. Mm -hmm. you know? It's the administration we are, we're in. We're, we're, yeah. we're having an administration that makes it... Um, that, that basically signaled that this kind of um, these kind of things would be... Um, allowed more, more, more ex yeah no i'll say more acceptable if the company is an american company so the fact that um, t-mobile is um you know kind of consuming sprint makes sense um we, we will see more of these consolidations going on uh in an atmosphere where you know it just i guess we've hit a point where these companies aren't growing organically anymore so um you know acquisitions are just going to be the thing that we see for the next few years Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, guys? Or oh, just about damn time? Well, yeah, I mean, like, you <laughs> yeah. guys know how cranky I get about competition. I want to see more companies competing in this space, not fewer. But Sprint has not been up to the challenge of of really trying to generate any consumer mobility outside of just pricing shenanigans. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll cut your bill in half. That does very well for them, but that also doesn't doesn't raise revenue to improve services or to build new towers or invest in a portfolio of devices that customers seem to appreciate. So I, I just keep thinking, you know, like, what will, will this be a good thing or a bad thing for my Project Fi if they join forces? Because <laughs> it was already uh, Sprint and T-Mobile. Like, I, I like think it, it shouldn't be change anything ideally, uh, but... I don't know. I just, I don't know. I never used the Sprint side anyways. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if, you know, if no, yeah, it's the, the switching on its own. No, yeah. you can. No, you can. You can force the switches. 
this apps to make it. Oh, that, that's all yeah. I, can do. I never, I never forced it. I never did the forcing on the switches. So. Oh yeah, there's there's, tons, for me. there's a bunch of five switching apps you can find right through the store that allows uh, you. To, uh, I, I, I think ultimately, in, in an environment where we we're, we're seeing a lot of stagnation um, for these ISPs or for these uh, um, providers, um, acquisitions are just going to be you know are the best things that can happen right now. Um, I would like to see innovation, and I would like to see competition that basically is spurred out of that in innovation. But right now, I don't see who's doing any innovation, and these companies need to grow. Um, it's, it's about time that uh, companies that are, that aren't performing to their um, potential gets basically bought up and removed from the from, from the pool. Survival of the fittest, and uh, Sprint is just not um, being good enough right now. They haven't been good enough for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, well, we have a comment here from Lou Rod, which I want to go back to. It says the best iPhone ever built was the one that wasn't built. <laughs> so, well, I, you know, I'm not an iOS fan, but, but using an iPhone SE, this feels like the right combination of hardware and software. I like using that phone. It is a little Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Um, uh, Colin says he's been a Sprint uh, customer for 22 years, man. Bro, guy likes to suffer. He loves to suffer. <laughs> cool, man. Wow, Ronald. That's a lot. I was a Sprint customer uh, in yeah, the I was 90s, OG Sprint too. late 90s, and, and then I switched to I was, I was a Sprint customer for every iteration until it became Sprint. And then I stopped being a Sprint customer. <laughs> I will I will share the video of when uh, Sam stopped being a Sprint customer, guys, so you guys can check it out. Um, <laughs> just to give you, just to give you a little, brutal. it was give, rough. A little, was a little rough. synopsis. Sam was doing an unboxing of a device, and then it turned into a rant on sprints. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> so I'll leave the link for you guys down there in the comments. Uh, moving on, Amazon Prime uh, is increasing in price. It's now going to be a hundred and nineteen dollars for Prime. Um, it's getting more expensive. Um, although, you know, a lot of will say, a lot of people will say it's still a bargain for all the things you get, you know, there's the shipping, uh, two day shipping. There's also the fact that you have Amazon prime movies, you've got music and you've also got, uh, storage, unlimited storage, which a lot of us don't use actually, but what are your thoughts on the price hike? Is it, is it justified? And also, uh, does this give you a cause for pause? I know some people are talking about how Amazon now is a monopoly, um, in what it does, uh, there are ways that people have argued that. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, there is no true competitor, and also Amazon can go into industries and shake up the industries and break it down to become a monopoly. I'm just throwing out what people are saying, not that I am saying this. Don't shake your head and look at me like that, Juan. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. So anyway, thoughts? I mean, you, you know how cranky liberal I get about things. It, it's a far cry from saying that Amazon is any kind of monopolistic business force yet. We do have to have some serious concerns, and I think they're overdue a little examination from regulatory agencies. But um, and, and I mean, there's also the hypocrisy of things like we're seeing Amazon bookstores pop up after they kind of wrecked part of the <laughs> market, yeah. you know, so so that that there are some frustrations there, but we're still a ways off, especially with how Prime operates and then lobster potting the price up on Prime. Um, actually, Marie and I are, are in that same boat. We're really looking at our behavior and whether or not this is a service that still provides the value for what we pay for it. And we're not buying. We're, we're making efforts to not buy everything through Amazon anymore. You know, th those those people who are concerned, you know, get, getting into conversations with people and they're like, oh, yeah, and Amazon's taking over. And you're like, but you still talk about buying everything from Amazon. You know, if you're this concerned about it. Go vote with your wallet. And we have been. We've been trying to find other outlets, especially supporting uh, retailers like Costco. Like we like the way that Costco does business with their uh, uh, their consumers. We like the way that Costco treats their employees. And so you know, if you have a problem with the way that Amazon forces people to pee in bottles to make their shipping quotas, then maybe you should stop doing business with Amazon so much. Uh, the, the, last, the, the, the last little hitch there, though, is we do we have been using a lot of Amazon streaming services. So we might continue with that just in addition to our Netflix and YouTube TV cord cutting ways. Cause there is some good stuff there. Yeah. I mean, I, I do hear you on that aspect. I mean, for me, especially living in New York coming from Massachusetts where yes, I could go to Costco or stuff like that. Going to Costco here on Ikea is just a hassle. 
Amazon is is gold. Well, we even even going to Costco here and all that stuff. It's still somewhat of a hassle. Yeah. So, you, <laughs> so at least for me here, it makes sense that I can order stuff and then it comes in. And then a lot of those companies also required you to have memberships to purchase through there, which a lot of them mm -hmm. had some type of fee. So what, what's the difference between them and Amazon? At least Amazon doesn't require well, a fee to shop. Well, where they're from. actually, I mean the the way that the way that Costco ranges up that fee. I mean, we usually pay back that fee because you get like cash back on the purchases you get through Amazon. Again, every company has this sort of like perk system. Yeah, yeah you membership, know, membership has its privileges, <laughs> but you know when, when I when I buy a ton of stuff through Amazon and I buy a ton of ton of stuff through through Costco, I get cash back at the end of the year, which can often almost pay for the differences in Costco membership. So. You can do the same things with Amazon. They have those same offers for cash back as well, too, based on their credit cards as well. So it, it's yeah, it, but I don't want there. a line of Amazon credit. I don't have to do that with Costco. Well, I mean, as you guys are fighting between Costco and Amazon, um, again, it all depends. Like for me, my own thinking is I'm actually paid for Amazon uh, uh, movies and all yeah, that Amazon stuff. Prime Prime movies, video. and I get free shipping. You know, it all depends on how you quit in your head. So I think it falls that way to the well. Individual. Well, let, let's be a little bit more critical on what Amazon is doing here, because um, don't forget that people are like, oh yeah, you get all these other services, but recently Amazon just basically um, reduced or if not cut off your music service storage. Um, if you wanted to keep it, you had to basically opt in to keep it. Otherwise, a lot of people probably didn't read the email. Um, and how Amazon many people is, actually used it? I don't see well, them I used it. I yeah. definitely use it. That, that's uh, and I'm sure, and I'm that, sure there are other that, people that, out that, there that use well, it. Well, that's the point I'm so trying to the, make. The idea is that, that Amazon is taking it. things away as well. It's not just giving, 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 and adding value. There is the proposition of taking away value, um, even though they're now increasing this price. Uh, and I think part of increasing this price, uh, dare I say it, is the, the, the whole idea that you're trying to become some kind of video powerhouse to, um, to challenge Netflix. So we're paying for them to go out there and make a new series uh, for Lord of the Rings, which I probably would like when it comes out. You but... probably would like, let's just say, you're happy with that contribution to <laughs> yeah, the but it just, it's $1 just... billion dollar, uh, Lord but, of the Rings. But does this constitute $20 of an increase um, a year for everyone else who doesn't care about this, who doesn't really use the service? Is, Sam, at this Sam, point, Sam, I think Sam look at me, look at me. I don't care. <laughs> at this point, I think it's, it's worth people asking. Um, what are you truly getting from Amazon? If you're using it for the free shipping, there might be better options of going directly to your um, to the retailers to get that free shipping from them and give them your money directly. Um, if you're using it for all the other ancillary um, services they give you, then maybe maybe it's a, it's a good proposition for yeah, you. Yeah, but see, but that, I mean, like I said, it all depends on the individual. But it, even for me, if I think of free shipping, that two day shipping, I don't get it from anybody else. I actually yeah. don't. you don't I really. Like, if you think of, you, that's a, you make up a great point about that. Fun else you don't like and most nobody people, does that most people have a tier if you have to spend fifty dollars or more yeah, to you, actually get that most of the time their their clothes aren't discounted down or whatever their products aren't discounted down any lower than than, than what you experience with amazon trust me we, i do i do and then and it's sunday deliveries the key one the one that oh yeah that the sunday deliveries sunday that you're like i need this stuff by but aren't they aren't, aren't they aren't they cheating usps Look, let's go there, man. Take that <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> No, we try to, we try to say that. Damn, Sam went out and straight up put on a red hat for that one. I'm like, oh, oh, like let's do this. Oh, no! <laughs> don't, don't go Kanye on this, man. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't do it. Don't you, do it. Did, you, did you dye your hair blonde? <laughs> That's why I have the hat on. Because do, you look like a, do you look like a black M&M now? <laughs> But anyway, oh, but anyway, I'm just saying that, that was again, crazy. Again, it boils down to the individual and how the individual looks at what they're spending on and for what reason. So I think right now most people are in the, in the camp that it's still justified at 119. When it hits that 150 mark, it's where it's going to be a problem. Yeah. I don't know. I, that, by the time it hits the 150, if you're willing to take it at 119, $30 more, that, then now you have to start asking the question. Let's see Amazon's video services gets more popular with the new shows they were investing money in. Does that really justify an additional $30 a year? Because people say, oh, it's a $30 a year or more. It's less than, you know, it's less than $3 see, a, a, a month. I would be happy at 150 if they made Audible just free because I don't like yeah. the model of Audible. Audible, I have to pay. You, you know what? You know what? Just stop, stop trying to get free audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But there's something there with Audible. 
was it, a tough it, one it, because it, that one's it, weird. Is 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 does it's, not work for me at all. It, it's like you like I I've, I've been paying for Audible, but you get the one credit for Audible, but then you can't keep any more than six of those credits. Again, if you don't use a credit, you lose a credit for that. So that means you got to keep on buying books over and over again. Yeah, it's but dude, at any the, time within a certain me, amount of time, you no, can no, sell, you can subscription service those books Audible. get your credit back. Give me a subscription service for Audible. Put a tiered system where I can get a book earlier than everybody else by paying extra, mm -hmm. an extra five or six bucks. Fine, that's that's cool. But don't give me. But then you get nothing Audible. done, man. You get nothing done. You just keep listening to audio books, and nothing will get done. Did I say that was a problem? <laughs> it's like no, that's not a problem. Like, like, what's showing on board at work today? Excuse me, I am listening to Peter F. Hamilton's new book. You guys can wait for this video. Exactly. No, but I'm just saying that there are things they can do within the, uh, the, some of the other services to spice it up. I think in the music side, they realize that they're not winning in that in the music arena. Spotify has been kicking everybody's butt um, completely. Uh, Google Music is still trying to hang on. The Apple is. They are, I mean, they are just behind. I mean, they're good for storing your stuff, but not in terms of. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I, don't, I, I was just bringing that up, Sam. I was like, you're probably the only one that stored, like, I know that stored their music there. Almost everyone either used some type of streaming service and gave up on putting their stuff into the cloud, or, or they jumped on it when Google offered that well ahead of time, like years before uh, Amazon actually offered that. So I could yeah. see them moving that. I can understand them moving that free service off to maybe offset to use something else or maybe use those resources to give something else as a better offer rather than just leaving there. There could be something better that they take, whatever, because it might be free, but they're still spending a cost to have that free service there. And someone has to manage it and, and maintain it and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure they could be ending that to then move something someplace else. So we'll see what, what sort of happens there with that. But um as of right now, it's um, you know, Amazon's this is it's an interesting company because they're 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 in integrated in a way that they they people say they you know kill a lot of businesses, but they also, if you look at the other side, they power a crap ton of businesses at the same time as yeah, well, too. especially from not just the cloud service. The cloud service is, cl is a clear indicator that they power a lot of services that we wouldn't even have if it wasn't wasn't for them being around and offering those. But even stuff from retail, there's so many more retailers now that can sell through Amazon and companies can sell through there that would not have that space before because you didn't because back then um, if you work in retail, it was it, it, working in retail, you learned about planos, you learned about all cap space and where everything's lined up and everything on that space is bought and sold and paid for and you got to buy into it to get your space there on, on on the floor for people to see in amazon you didn't have you, you, there there's 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 unlimited space available available there to you so it's you know we're hey, getting a lot more amazon companies that we we that would never have in say what i say amazon's even giving best buy life with the new partner yeah yeah but well, somebody's got to give that Need that damn company something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you know, if you look, if you, if you look, there's so many companies now that we cover, we review, that we talk about that we would not be talking about if it wasn't for them being able to sell online, not only online, but have some place to go as Amazon, Huawei. Huawei. <laughs> The, think about the anchor batteries, the um, anchor company that sells all those batteries, and some of these other companies such as well, like cell phone, case, case, cell phone case, case yeah. companies. Think think of companies like um, HyperX, Steel Series, uh, Logitech. You Logitech had a big brand, but they grew massively more because they could go into a, a store, they put everything on the same playing playing field, and said, "Well, go at it, and whoever gets gets up there gets up there." You know, look at a company like Blue that's selling phones. How do they survive in a Best Buy or in a retail True. store? How do they, they can't? They can't at all. These the, 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 the Amazon, I think, has provided more value in terms of bringing businesses out there that would not exist without them. The, than the I think only people, that is, people. I, I, I agree with you, Warren. The only issue there is Amazon is not altruistic, and what we see is them learning from the behavior of the more successful sellers on their platform, and then basically muscling them on muscling them out with their own sales behavior. Um, I have a I have a friend whose husband is into medical tech and you know, you have to have a presence on Amazon. Well, now Amazon is selling his kit too. 
and using basically the same the same methods of selling med tech to small businesses that he was. So now he's kind of proper screwed. You know, he invested in actually enriching the Amazon platform by providing a service. And then that that service became replicatable and Amazon can now just make more money directly. So those are the types of things that I think people get get anxious about. You know, when Amazon first kicked up and, and moved from being a bookseller to being a general lifestyle consumer um, you know, store, uh, it was it was this great shift in how we buy and sell products. And it was this great empowering shift. And we're seeing this with a lot of communities. I mean, you can look at YouTube as another sort of model that started out really free and open and democratized and was accessible and a lot of people were making money on it. And then the realities of how you continue operating that change over time. So now it's that we're concerned where Amazon might be heading with some of these business practices and why they probably are overdue some type of regulatory oversight. All right, moving on from Amazon, let's go to our boys at Microsoft. They're having a damn good quarter. And uh, see, it looks like, you know, the golden child. Just giving you some stats from Microsoft uh, with their earnings release for Q3. Um, $26 billion, uh, billion in, in revenue, increase of 16%. Operating income was 8.3, increase of 23%. Net income was 7.4, increase of 35%. Now, if you go into every single business segment, had an increase. Um, if you're looking at office, had an increased uh, revenue of 14%, growth of 42%. Uh, office consumer was 12%. LinkedIn had a 37% increase as well. Uh, server side was um, the cloud was 7.9 7 billion and increased uh, by 17%. Servers up by 20. Windows OEM was up by 4%. Windows commercial uh, was up increased by 21. Uh, gaming revenue was up by 18. Surface was up by 32. Advertising search traffic was up by 16%. Damn. Everything's working out well in Microsoft, even though we've been bitching. I guess our advice, you know, is is the long term, not the short term. <laughs> <laughs> no, our, our our advice is still on point for consumer facing hardware departments and sales. It's just yeah. that we knew with Microsoft at the head, uh, the head of Microsoft being such a server and services guy, that that was going to be the focus. It's funny when you put effort and focus and resources towards a certain type of business. That business seems to do better than if you just let another business wither on the vine without a lot of uh, without a lot of attention or resource. If they could approach hardware with the same kind of focus and determination that they approach services, I think they'd be doing a lot better there too. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, CNBC dropped uh, an article that says Microsoft is you know trying is catching up uh, with not that it's catching up, but it's growing against uh, AWS. AWS still sits at thirty three percent of the market, has not grown, it is flat. Microsoft yeah. is now at 30%. It's growing pretty fast. Yeah, and I, I, it's kind of crazy. I actually ran into someone at a bar yesterday, and the first thing they told me when we were talking about basically what they do is they're, they're like, oh, I'm a UX designer, and it's really cool because now I'm working with Microsoft. I'm like, what are you doing with Microsoft? She's like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm basically doing the interface for when companies buy, um, you know, Azure services from us as part of a bundle. She's doing the interface for that. So she's like, yeah, a lot of companies have been like buying into Azure. I'm like, wow, that that's it's and it's a big a bigger company that she's in. So if Amazon, I mean, if uh, Microsoft is making that push to bundle its services with other bigger um, service providers and provide that as a you know an overall package, then yeah, the Amazon's the Amazon should get ready for some uh, steep competition, some really uh, tough competition. Azure just also a lot easier to understand its billing. Yeah, it is by like a lot. That's its big, 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 big. You, big, you see, that's the thing. That, that's the one thing I asked her, too. I asked her, like, uh, I, I, I asked her, hey, I've always heard that AWS was always easier to work with. And she's like, no, it's just a different way of working. So it's, it's <laughs> one of those things. It's like, it's not tougher or hard. It's just a different way of working. So well, for plat platform wise, yeah, I'm just talking about the understanding what the hell you're supposed to be charged. And they have, they have, they have to make a calculator, literally a giant calculator page you to figure that out and guesstimate that stuff. Wow. It, 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 it sounds worse than filing my quarterly taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about this story, with so much success riding in that, that server and corporate and business market, do you think that this is going to lend more credence to some of the rumors we've heard about Windows 10 as a service, Windows 10 going free? So that it can it can ease, more easily compete against uh, Chrome and Android? 
I, I wouldn't be surprised that it did become something like that. I mean, they've always, I mean, we've not just recent rumor. This rumor has been going on since a Windows 8, that the next version of Windows, which was supposed to be yeah, 10, Windows as a service, yeah. That would be a service. And, you know, and that's the thing that, may, you know, to me, it's, I think they're still thinking of ways to monetize it properly that it actually fits in. And because Windows is something that, um, you know, will people be willing to pay? Is it ten dollars a month or whatever the amount is, or is it something where you know Windows Home is free, and but then there's a cap on functionality, and then you get Pro, which is like ten bucks a month or whatever. Yeah, it's probably going to be a freemium, uh, freemium, freemium service, and and how you actually put it uh, into basis because one of the things uh, that was interesting, I uh, was reading an article about. Um, Azure and also gaming is that a lot of gaming companies have actually picked up Azure. And the reason why we actually have cross-platform gaming is because of Azure servers. Not that you can't do it on AWS or anything. I'm just saying that that's just one of the biggest things. Like Ubisoft, for instance, said they that would ha that help them get um, cross-platform gaming so you could play PC, uh, PS4, and Xbox, um, you know, all together. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how all that plays in together because I think... I mean, they might have Microsoft might have a roundabout idea for their for for them becoming that market leader that we would like them to see. But how does that play into the hardware market? You know, in terms of um, Windows devices, whether it's uh, low cost devices that are powered by, say, Qualcomm, or high end devices, gaming, whether it's gaming laptops, or even going into the you know again the smart speaker market right now is is still one that's growing on a large degree and the smart home arena. You know, to me, I think if Microsoft, the only way Microsoft can enter that market and win is not go through a smart speaker route, but actually create an ecosystem that is proper for smart home. Because yeah. right now we have this very, I mean, to me, I feel Samsung has the best ecosystem, even though it's not an ecosystem. It's just a hub that allows you to connect everything. Well, you know, they're the ones who are doing that. And Samsung is not the best company suited for that, I think, in this in this in this battle. So and you have Google who's trying to do their own thing. You have Amazon who is now try, has done a whole reset and says, here, you can now make your own Amazon skills because we fucked up with skills. And <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and, and do your own thing. And then there's Apple doing their own thing in their own ecosystem there. So, you know, can Microsoft come in? I mean, think about it. Windows is. Windows has always been the platform for everything. You can throw everything on Windows. So why can't that be the platform that takes over, um, you know, uh, the connected home and IoT? So you can actually have that full connectivity. It all depends on how they want to do it, you know, and whatever happens. But you know, um, I, I got no advice for them at this point. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> Any more thoughts on on, uh, on Microsoft? Well, I just love it whenever one of these these earnings comes out. We always see like a flurry of headlines like, oh, yeah, like Microsoft has always been a good bet. And yet every every headline in between the quarterlies is, oh, Microsoft screws this up or they can't get their hardware <laughs> right. Or they had to oh, the surface this. And and you're like, no, no, they're 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 kind of just this like they're not exciting, but they're this like slow, consistent yeah, we're still making money. We're like the second or third, maybe sometimes the fourth, but we're always bouncing around in like the top three to five, uh, you know, <laughs> highest valued companies of all time. So yeah, we're cool. We're good. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, we're have, we have sitting at number two and Apple has been slowing down, which is, is interesting. I can't remember where the report is. I wish I could find it where some investors were talking about how Apple is just not the bet that they're looking at because of uh, some stagnance, especially the iPhone 10. The fact that now most investors know that the 6S is is the device to sell it, which means that is what uh, three year old tech or two year old tech, right? Something mm -hmm. like that um, in there, which means it's not moving forward. Um, they weren't too convinced about the Apple's uh, educational strategy with the iPads, um, you know, on, on that aspect. And also the fact that um, I think now a lot of companies are talking about the fact that Apple has no cloud presence as well. Um, yeah. Which well, is, which they is... do on Microsoft servers. <laughs> no, uh, the VP is Google. Google, Google, Google now. So oh, Google, Google servers. Google. That's right. That's yeah. yeah. So they have no cloud I stand presence. Corrected. And the fact that AI and cloud is the big buzzword for this year, everyone's talking about it. 
So even the, the investor who doesn't know deeply will have to go, okay, what's your car price? What are you doing in that? You know, what, what, I, what I would be really frustrated with if I had money in on tech stocks right now, I would be really tired of all of the red herring rumor um, stories that we hear from Apple. They're working on a car. They're working on a TV. They're working. I, I just saw another one pop oh, up on the AR, just, uh, Yeah, Apple's right? going to have AR, VR tech coming out soon. But then the only, the the only, the only stories that have actual substance to them lately have been, you know, Apple's going back to the iPhone success, and Apple is going to gut and get rid of uh, the the airport. So they're going to get out of networking and. Mm -hmm. Apple is scroll is dialing back on HomePod production because of low demand. Don't Those are the real headlines of consequence. All of these like rumors and pie in the sky, future tech. I just don't have a lot of confidence in Apple R and D and Skunk Works right now. I want to well, I want to see it, Apple it's not really. Even, it's not take even the that. market. Think about the like the. I'm just looking at the uh, the AR headset may pack an 8K display. First of all, to be practical, it's not going to happen. Simply put, if Samsung doesn't make that display, it will not show up. Well, and not just the oh, display. Okay. Like, how do you power it when, you know, Vive Pro is already kind of a monster when it comes to the system spec? System. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying that even on the display aspect alone, like, you know, the, the market leaders making display are LG and Samsung. They don't have that, which means Samsung, yeah. I mean, Apple can't even put it in there. You can make a demo, sure. That's they're they're, they're gonna they're gonna reach out to Sony and get those really tasty uh, Xperia Premium screens so you can have. Uh, it's a 4K um, displays. You know, you get two of them. You get two of them. You can stick two <laughs> Sony Xperia Premiums up against your eyeballs. It's gonna be awesome. You heard it from me here first. Apple's totally gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, just some other news, which is not posted in. Uh, movie Pass CEO said he's unsure if Movie Per Day will work, plan will work, come back again, because Movie Pass has now changed to you cannot see the movie again. The movie you've seen, yeah, they, 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 they don't let you that. repeat view anymore. Yeah, so that's out. Uh, movie, I mean, it seems like Movie Pass is moving away from his Wild West days of like, man, you could just watch anything <laughs> to to put in some limitations on, on what you can actually do with that. Um, I'd like to hear if there's anyone who's a, a movie pass customer. I know Lou, you are. Um, and if this, if how does this affect your movie uh, viewing experience? Because it's uh, it's just interesting how that's been changing. I think because they've been they've been they've been receiving a lot of bite back from uh, theaters like AMC and the rest of them. So totally. Uh, I think that well, this this is also again. I mean, like when I was working at a movie theater way back in the day, it always used to bother me when people would say like, "Oh, well, they make all their money on concessions." Like, actually, no, movie theaters make profits on ticket sales. So it was surprising to me that Movie Pass could work as some kind of subscription service. And we're seeing now that the realities of once this became even just a little bit popular with heavy movie users, some of that original goodwill had to be rethought in how the service would work yeah no no that's just very true um some other news which i find interesting and uh long overdue ford will stop selling most of its cars they basically trimmed down the production line fast. yeah I, I just shared that on twitter too right before we went live like ford takes ball and goes home <laughs> Ford, no one wants to buy our cars. So instead of making better cars, we're just going to stop and you can buy SUVs because those are real hot well, right now. Well, SUVs in one. But actually, you know what? It's it's good. I actually like the idea. It's not a bad idea because they had a problem in American car companies. They have too many lines of cars. Well, that, that's 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 what I mean, though, is whittle back. And, and a company like Ford has the resources to instantly go toe to toe with Tesla if they would get over themselves and look at how the market is responding to things like EVs and infrastructure and stuff. I'm, I'm kind of tired of these companies. going. There's just nothing we can do. I just people don't want to buy our cars. And you're like, well, yeah, but they are buying cars. Why don't you look at the cars that are being sold and and like, you know, make your cars better well yeah, yeah I mean, but but you yeah. see the thing the thing is simply this right one of the biggest um or one of the fastest growing car manufacturers in the world right now is what well, um is hyundai hyundai caught up a few years ago to toyota and um at that point people were like oh my god hyundai is doing whatever they're going to be what they had there's like big news about it but then hyundai has been slowly de declining not because they're not innovating, not because there's no consumer demand for their cars, but because they don't have SUVs. 
So that's the thing. SUVs are selling right now. <laughs> so if if forty yes, cent we're going to stop, yeah, if forty cent we're going to mm-hmm. stop producing. Um, if, if forty cent we're going to stop producing sedan, sedans for now, um, and focus more on what's selling, I, I see that as a, as a viable uh, business plan. I think it's, it's, it's SUVs are selling because of status symbol. Not well, because stat, status and the gases and yeah, the gas is, yeah. Yeah. The gas is cheaper now. Yeah. And, and it, now. it only takes one. Yeah, I was gonna say it only takes one one goof in the market on oil speculation for people to be complaining about filling up their SUVs. I think, the, and I think the I think the the, the the price of oil has been going up recently, anyway. So no, it almost did, but then it got crushed again. <laughs> yeah, I did. Nah. I think I got crushed recently. I mean, I think I think for Ford, you know, it's something uh, Ford Ford can easily do this than, than GM, uh, because to me, it's it's very simple. Yes, you have your SUV line because that's your main market that's making money. But you actually, your I think they're only keeping one sedan, and then make well, that. They're the, keeping the Mustang. <laughs> just, I think they're keeping one. Even, do, do you even consider that from, a sedan? From the, from the article I read, that the one car they're going to be keeping is the Mustang, but that they're going to be ramping down production on smaller cars through 2022. So there are going to be some lines of like Fiestas and stuff, which will. Yeah, but the Fiesta well. does well in Europe. So they said it's the right. US is going to end here, and the Europe is still going to actually continue. Unless that market actually changes, so I think I think for them is just a, they need to sit down and look at like okay how do we actually yeah I mean it, it, a lot a lot has changed in the market you know um, you have uh, you have um, people uh, buying different types of cars they're they're not um, well, then it, it's like you said with the SUVs that, that sort of things happen and some people are also um, changing where they're living in places where they don't necessarily use their car as often as well too so sometimes that comes into play um you have the you know the ride sharing and then all the stuff like that that people are driving less not using their car as often may may sell the car because they might be in a position where well i could use this it just the math adds up more 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 for me in that manner well i don't think cars are going to totally obviously go away I, I i do think there's just starting to be a shift of this need of having to have that car unless you absolutely have to have it well, versus, and, and versus people had cars that didn't necessarily need it but had it because it it, it, it was just it was it was it was I something mean, they already purchased well, ahead and, of and Ford, Ford is working against a generational shift in how we think about major purchases like automobiles and and younger generations coming after us are not putting the same kind of value and status on what's happening now even in a, even a, even no i mean that's, that's what i'm saying is they're they're but but this is a trend right this isn't a trend yeah. that's just going to instantly flip and instead we're going to be seeing other services take root and take hold over just straight up car ownership especially if we start seeing again younger generations of people as they rise to power reevaluating the work life balance and yeah. and all work, work from home is another thing is working from home exactly so yeah. so that kind of stuff i mean that that all plays into a strategy for me which is very short sighted we can fulfill American demand right now on the more popular vehicles, but that's a terrible long term strategy as you ignore up and coming market segments, which are going to look at other types of vehicles as being more status driven. I mean, I roll up in, in a in a nice Ford badged product or you roll up in a Tesla and older generations of people are going to look at that Ford or that Lincoln and go, wow, whereas younger generations are going to say, oh, you know, I want the Tesla. Yeah, I mean. To me, it's that. It's like, I don't understand why they don't market things a certain way. Like, you know, people doing ride sharing make cars affordable for those folks that want to buy and ride share their asses off. You made taxis. You made taxis do a specific thing. Why aren't you entering to the market that may want to actually, all they want to do, they want to do that and they want an affordable car that in the end of the day, it adds up that they're making money out of those things. It's, you know, there's obviously nuances to a lot of those things, but yeah, it's like they're not. I don't feel they ever really target like target a market in the way they're doing it. It's like we're doing the same things we've been doing the entire time. We're just going to keep on doing it. Although I do think they'd be in better shape if they didn't have the shitty dealership laws that we have yeah. that are crappy. And one of the things I'm like, this, this, this is why I want Tesla to kind of succeed. It's like as long as they can sell directly off the internet to people and more of their cars come out there and they bust beyond this dealership nonsense. 
to eventually we're at a point where all these other companies can then sell directly to their consumers. And may, maybe an Amazon makes a store out of it. Who the hell knows? I wouldn't be surprised if you can buy a car for Amazon that's delivered by a drone at some point. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. Or it's not it. even delivered by a drone. It just drives itself to your house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Self drives. With 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 the rest of your prime stuff, they they figure out what the logistics and get all your stuff all like you, today's groceries are in your new car that you that you bought up today. But um, I I I, I kind of feel that whole market in general isn't really skewing itself in the right right direction in in the ways. Well, and, and we've success. and we've seen this from other automobile manufacturers where they try and do like a youth oriented play. And you're like, young yeah. people don't want your young person. Oh God! Deal. There's there's a the very good there's, there's a very good um, old very people good, love those cars though. Like, there's a very a... very good video uh, from about two or three years ago that um, Adam Cano from Adam Ruins Everything talks about millennials, and he talks yeah. about basically how the advertising and and that's it, amazing. It's amazing because it's amazingly accurate to, to, to exactly what he's sort of saying. Um, and, and such. I actually followed up with the podcast with the, the he, he did a podcast with one, with one of the women mm -hmm. that were in that study that, that that also brought some good information as well too but it's it, it, it's the combination of that, it's the combination of many cities are also now realizing we sort of screwed up and should have made our cities more public, public transit, transit, transit focused yeah. yes. and we started seeing the cities like even I, I've heard LA is one is printing one of the cities that are really at the forefront of that apparently because I remember the last time I walked around in LA and I was just amazed that like that like mm -hmm. there's barely any well no there's public transit there but the fact it was like it was like I've never seen it that empty I like bought a ticket I looked around and said where do I put my ticket we just walk in I was like there's no turnstile does somebody yeah. check this yeah, straight up degaff, man. I mean, like, like what, maybe what? a cop will be on well, once I mean, a week to check your tickets. You could so. never do this in Boston or New York. <laughs> See, but I think I think as much as we talk about cars, I mean, the main, the biggest destruction down the line, long term, is is public transportation. You know, yeah. you take take Boston, for instance, right? Boston has G coming in. Boston is rumored to be one of the few finalists for Amazon. And if you throw that in there, if you ever been to Boston, you know that having a car is needed, but having a car is also a oh, detriment at the same time. So it, 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 it's you, a you it's can't a move without a car, but you also don't want to have a car. Well, and there are cities like that that are growing around the U.S. around yeah, the world. In general. Let's let's rephrase that. You can move around Boston without a car, depending on where you live what's considered the city of city Boston. Boston. Yeah. It's, it, Boston's a unique place because it's not really a city. It's a collection of towns and squares. It's not a whole <laughs> big thing. <laughs> it is. It's a collection yeah, yeah. of towns and squares. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's correct. It's a yeah. yeah. town. Yeah. What's, what's really the city of Boston? Where, do you, where does that start? What, Boston, uh, Boston proper yeah, is one true. square mile. It, co Copley? Uh, Copley? Copley, no. That's, that's yeah. not really quite yeah. Boston yeah. either. Financial <laughs> district? Not I mean, really, because that's more to the Boston Com like the Boston Commons, part of the closest thing to starting yeah. with the city is, is considered. Yeah, it, Boston like, is an interesting place. It's, yeah. it's, it's, so, but, it's, but that's um, the thing, though. You have a lot of cities, and you have LA too, where I mean, we all know how traffic is terrible on the four or five. You city know what? No, 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 no. I, I've, I've driven down there. You LA people whine too much about driving in traffic. Drive in Boston. Driving no, 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 this city, no, 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 no. talking about traffic. driving Boston, no, I'm driving I'm New York, Boston. man. It took me forty-five minutes to go four miles. Okay? Yeah, do one of those. <laughs> look, look. I, I, so see, I've driven in all three cities, and but let me tell you this: there's no place, none of this. Boston, New York, does not have traffic on a Sunday morning at three a.m. on a highway. Why? L.A. Well, it's every time it's happened to me in L.A. Yeah, three a.m. in the morning on Sunday when you're coming back from church. Is that the name of the club? From Midnight Mass? Is that that's what you're doing? Yeah. So that's Midnight the name of the club. Mass. Yeah. How, how is Club Church doing? Uh, anyway, <laughs> from Church. Service, was, service was good. <laughs> service was very but, good. But, 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 um, um, yeah, but either way. LA is very, true. LA is a unique to thing to where New York, where they have like five or six different shifts of the day. And we're, yeah. we're, we're one of those well, cities that just but, doesn't but have that. LA traffic isn't isn't bad because of just the upright density that you see in Boston and in New York. It's bad because people have to live 
you know, 40 or 50 miles away from where they work. Oh, yeah, that's commute terrible. through yeah. Those, yeah. those those sectors. So like when I go down to City of Industry to shoot Newegg, it takes me about an hour to get down. It's it's about 30 miles away from me. It takes me about an hour to get down there at six oh, in the morning. God. It takes me about two hours to come back. Speaking spe speaking on to that, like um, I think you you were away when I was actually driving around LA. I think in the end of August, I think you were out of town oh, yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. But I, I was I was I was in Palm Springs, and then I did the drive from Palm Springs to Laguna, some beach. I don't remember mm -hmm. what it was. It was hippie town. Couldn't stand it. Then from right, there, guys, that's it for me. Yeah. I gotta bounce. All right, Sam. All right, Sam. Have a good one, man. Have a good one, man. But I, I, I did the travel from there to Temecula because we had another relative that was there. And then, well, all right, all right, so we're going to go. We went to we wanted to visit San Diego, and then we also <laughs> wanted to go to L.A. <laughs> I could not believe. I was like, we're getting here fast because I can go down 70. So this is only about an hour and a half. So this doesn't feel that bad. But then I sit back and I'm like, the sheer amount of distance I just traveled. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. And the only yeah. reason that it's even plausible is because they have 70 mile an hour uh, speed limits on those highways. And I was like, so when 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 the when the chargers were moving to LA and some and they were trying to say on TV, yeah, San Diego fans would travel up to LA to go watch the game. I said, <laughs> no, they're not did that drive nope. to get from Temecula just to uh we went I went from Temecula to um uh all the way to the beach to Santa Monica Pier. We drove all the way there. That was like an hour and a half to two hours with some mm -hmm. moderate traffic in it. Now imagine if you won't go into a game trying to go to that. Nah. That, that, no, that's not that, that's just not possible. Yeah, I, I think I think that's the thing is that uh, cities have to start looking at very practical, especially in the U.S. I mean, Europe yeah. has done a very good job. Oh yeah, Europe has made their stuff with public, walking first. Public, not that just, but just the public transportation yeah. around, whether you're catching a train or a bus, whatever the case may be. And I think the U.S. needs to come to terms with that. That at least, even though uh, yes, highways are great, especially when you're connecting cities to cities or towns yeah. away. But we should we should come up with a with a nice system where we can replicate public transportations as new cities or smaller cities grow in the yeah. U.S. Uh, and you know cities expand that we have a nice yeah. network that it, it it makes it plausible for connectivity because the next generation, like you said, is not necessarily focused on automobiles like the previous generation was. Like you know we talked about cars here and you talked about Tesla. Most of the time, and it's not an you know it's a it's a tech auto company, not an auto company. Yeah, it's a very different mindset. Yeah. So, well, but but we've so seen that's, we've that's seen the thing that's it's going to seen traditional change. brands tap into some of that excitement. Yeah. I mean, don't don't forget. I, I feel like Nissan was was garnering say, almost as much press for EVs when the original Leaf launched, and they were talking about, hey, you know, we want fifty percent of our fleet to be all electric by this date. And then the entire auto industry was rocked because this was 2006, I think, when the first Leaf was was released, and or might have been 2007. But regardless, you know what happened in 2000 between 2006 and 2008 that totally screwed every Everything, industry yeah. over. Yeah. So you know we saw that we saw Chevy with the Volt. We saw these these glimmers of traditional auto manufacturers being able to compete in this space with desirable, exciting vehicles, building on the success of Toyota. Um, in this space also it's just they all stopped you know you're not going to win anyone over with like a plug-in ford focus you know you you need an option that's also exciting and premium and luxury mm -hmm. at the same time and that's, that's what tesla's that's doing us. yeah i mean and, and to wrap up this whole thing we've talked a lot about it one of, one of the other concerns kind of comes in this is why i think cities are starting to try and focus a lot more on people first in the cities over you know cars and parking and all that stuff you have a lot you have this case where you have a lot of people let's say they live in the suburbs to live a distance away from things that happen they become car dependent and then it then it turns into a point where let's say you have you have kids or in a family you're driving your kids all around to and from because there's no real public transit or walkway to get to and from a specific place yeah Eventually, that flips because if the parents are still living there, they get to a point where they're not driving anymore, and now the kids have to come in from wherever they are to take the parents to wherever they're supposed to go. I mean, some of that's going to get alleviated with a lot of delivery services and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that's that, but that's another huge problem that they're seeing, especially from suburbs to cities, where you're having these folks that are essentially landlocked into where they live. Because the the reliance of of uh, car transportation 
in the areas that they live in is so yeah. high. And, and that's definitely one of LA's major problems too. I mean, with that space, you know, you try and hit the Metro and you still might have to walk two miles <laughs> to get like where you need to be with the closest Metro stop. But this is another major story that just popped up. A Vox is on top of this one. A whole new generation of electric buses are coming. Uh, you know, and again, people are getting excited about less air pollution, less noise pollution, easier maintenance. Uh, lower travel costs, better travel experience, quieter ride. I mean, all of these things will matter, but it's just also getting uh, the older generation off of this stigma of of vehicles and buses and that experience where it's going to be completely appropriate and probably a better experience for a lot of us. I, I would give anything to have good regular bus routes or a metro that when I travel, it's going to still take me the same amount of time because I'm going like 30 or 40 miles but I could be reading, I could be writing a script, I could be editing a video, I could be doing anything else yeah. other than being in charge of operating my my car. Well, we have to get over the 50 years of these car companies and stuff like that, longer than that, honestly, putting, but, but that's, but the thing here, you, I know, I know, but that, that's the mindset an older generation has, and that's from a lot of advertising from a lot of these companies pushing you can't that kid. old so it is not you well <laughs> but no it but makes me it, it makes it, me it, come, it comes from that it, the, their mindset is that if you ride public transportation you're less than or you're poor totally or, and and it's a and it's a bad it, it it's all marketing because the most majority of it's not true and it's and like it, it, and, it, and it, it is it's funny that you mentioned that because new york is the one place that's different right yeah yeah in fact well, that, eh, CEOs exact take the subway. <laughs> yeah. Well, New York, well, New York and Boston like, are the like unique London. example of that. Yeah. Are yeah. Unique examples of that. But like you, you, you see them peddle that false narrative out there, and it's which has boomed their industries, and now it's boomed it so big that it's gotten to a point where people in our generation either can't afford cars or can't quite can't quite get the same style of cars or got to get an old beater or something like that. And even then. The, the cost of parking it's all become the cost of actually trying to drive to and from work has become so expensive that they can that they, that the that taking public transit is a cheaper option to essentially have yeah and and, and it's getting to the point where if that's a cheaper option then now that starts to become a little maybe a little more of a pop more popular option if public transit starts to improve now they don't they, these companies won't have that narrative to sit there and say you know, for the next generation. Oh, yeah. If you ride public transit or you ride public, you know, whatever, you're less than or something like that. Where everyone else that has that, that everyone else in generation is riding Ubers and Lyfts and taking the T and the train are going to go. No, that's just not true. And and it also drives me crazy because we also it, I think it's another generational idea. It's this like the freedom argument. Like, freedom. It makes it makes me flip out every time I hear there is no freedom I, of the way to Oh, dude. I mean, but if you listen to like the Joe Rogan podcast, it's all about like, oh, I don't want a computer telling me where I can and can't go if I have a self-driving car, if I'm in some kind of, you know, like public transit. It's it's all about the open I mean, road they, and I mean, having to, a Porsche. To be, fair, a Porsche. to be fair, there was a point in time where there was freedom. Because you yeah, like, think about it. You could buy your car as long as you didn't include the like New York, for instance, always paying for parking. But like you had a house, you bought your car and that's it. You could just drive. Right. Yeah, and I, I road tripped on Route sixty six once. It was awesome. It yeah, was great. but that but that aspect is is not gone. Is diminished. I'll put it that way. Has been. Yeah. Like, well, and also, I mean, it's like it, horses still exist. You 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 take them out and you take them on trails, and it's now a leisure activity. Yeah. So okay, if you right. want to really drive your car, <laughs> you want to own your super awesome GT two Porsche, and you really want to take it out, go hit a track day. But don't tell me that. Sitting in bumper to bumper gridlock on the on the 101 at 8 a.m. is the same as having the freedom of the open road. I mean, yeah. that's such a serious argument. Well, well speaking you know. speaking of horses, since we've been on this topic too long, um, this actually has nothing to do with it. But GPU prices it looks like they're about to drop pretty soon. GPU makers are poised for a massive drop in shipments due to reduced demand from crypto miners. Yes. Interesting. Looks Buy like that things, wasn't man. a very loyal customer base for you guys. Look who comes crawling back. MSI says they expect to see April shipments to drop by guess how much? 40%. Seriously? Well, yes. I mean, well, on, on our video feed, you just did 04. Oh, so. sorry. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> it might finally be time to, for me to grab that uh, 1080 Ti I've been eyeballing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's dropping for now because crypt because the interest in crypto isn't high now because the news is sort of. Like crypto cri crypto price fluctuations have been preventing it from paying out like people yeah, thought it yeah but also again but, you have to understand but all another buzz for it to <laughs> i mean true but the, but there are better mining tools than gpu cards out there that's the well, thing yeah. like, well depends on what you're mining too yeah it depends on what you're mining too but there's still better tools out there i mean especially all those those mining crypto rigs you know and that that are not gpu card based and you also some of these companies have also made specific GPU mining cards that are not necessarily uh, your standard graphics cards as well. So that, I think that comes into play. But also, again, you look at it, the fact that new cards are coming out. Uh, May AMD is going to announce the 1180, which you know performance-wise kills everything out right there now. So uh, and the MSRP is still going to be the same. So it may, you know it just kind of falls everything falls into place which well is and and also amd has actually been rocking some some die shrink process uh I, i'd be i'd be curious to see if they can pull off a, an early 2019 vega refresh you see, i i the uh, gpu side of the business i just don't trust those guys at all like they don't i mean like cpu right now amd is finally after all these years like, <laughs> no no I'm, I'm, I'm talking i'm talking about like currently now because the they are almost there but they cannot figure it out because if you look at the vega cards that came out last year everybody says the same thing they're like you almost got there but for it, whatever reason you cannot solve your heat issues right now but that, that hasn't always been the thing for them it's always always no 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 none of their cards have become that. seriously in the last four years this is the first card that literally you can go yes it competes but it's running this hot and it's taking this much power which is not even a traditional amd thing that's an nvidia thing and nvidia is clocking lower than you so why should i buy it? Well, and then also, I, I think one of the major missteps for Vega, uh, for Vega 64 and Vega 56 was looking at where the industry might go. You were making, when you bought a Vega card, you were making the future proof argument and that AMD cards typically perform better over time as drivers and developers Others, really yeah. learn how to maximize that card. But we saw, I think, one of the wider disparities in legacy support. So here you're getting this this amazing hot new GPU. Then you go and fire up one of your older games, and it runs very poorly compared to the uh, the NVIDIA competition. But that's why I'm, I'm I'm very curious because we've been seeing all this news. Intel's 10 nanometer tech is broken. AMD might be on track for seven nanometer if that process advantage starts to extend over into their GPU refit and design. Yeah, because that's what isn't it is next it, um... could close the gap in that power. Uh, power performance ratio you know vega isn't necessarily bad tech it just might be it, it just might need that process shrink that die shrink to get it to where it needs to be yeah that is that is true i, I think that's something oh rising 2 is 12 nanometers sorry i was thinking rising 2 i was about to say rising 2 is 10 but uh that's what helped the performance of rising 2 totally so well um you know it's the same processor with like a few extra things on there from last year but the the die shrink sire uh, the die uh shrink basically it gives you just some really great performance all around well, so. and and at the same time we might be seeing seven nanometer seven nanometer 3000 series ryzen's by the end of next year i mean it mm -hmm. could be that aggressive while we'll probably not see intel at 10 nanometer until uh it, earliest i've been seeing is end of 2019. um if if any of those of those advantages extend to their GPUs, then we might see some decent competition against NVIDIA again, but we're talking about them realizing that over the next year, not like for this next cycle. This no, next this next cycle, yeah, it'll have to be, it'll have to be next year, but prices are dropping, which is always great for us. So we can actually get yeah. GPUs and stuff. So, you know, uh, I, I still yeah. might go with a Vega card. I, I'm going to be mostly using this for, for video. Uh, production and Vega does well there. It's not necessarily suffering too much of a deficit. It's just it's it's been annoying watching some of the stories come out on things like the Nvidia partner program, uh, the GeForce partner program. And yeah. I it, again, I, if I have an opportunity to vote with my wallet, it's not too bad of a hit. And I'm already spending a ridiculous amount of money on this build. Then uh, I I might take that route and go uh, Threadripper with a with a Vega. Okay. Yeah.
right. Well, all right. That's the call. I was waiting for. I got to run, guys. All so, right. Um, cool call. Yes, it's, it's later. Time to wrap up. Thank you very much, Warren. Um, See you guys later. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, end of the show. Appreciate it. Um, I was going to ask Warren what he has on his channel, but he has stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll move on to you, Mr. Juan back now. What is currently in your channel? What can we expect uh, next week? So uh, last week was a little bit quiet just because I'm wrapping up some some side projects and some stuff that I can't really talk about just yet. But I will be getting out. I'm hoping to have it finished over the weekend, uh, getting out my uh, camera review and finishing up my long term review on the Honor View 10. So like I said earlier on in the year, I want to spend more time with the phones I review and I'm looking to long term reviews, not doing a dozen videos and comparisons on every phone that comes out. So uh, that that'll be I actually have the timeline open now. I've been throwing photos into uh, my video editor just to try and wrap up uh, this this video. But there will be the uh, the long term hands on stuff for that. Uh, every Thursday, New Egg Now, uh, we just did uh, an episode last Thursday on parent tech. And uh, we also talked with uh, one of the reps over at LG about the new LG Graham. And then on Monday, we should be I think we're going to be doing another episode of the Geek Book Club talking about Master and Commander, the first book of a 20 book series that I will not be reading all of that series. Okay, cool. I just took a photo of you, um, and it Aww. recognized you in portrait mode with the Huawei right P20. And speaking of the P20, we dropped our tweet P20 uh, Pro camera test with our professional uh, photographer, my a good friend of mine, Marion Sell. So definitely check it out. He goes through different images. He, I mean, so just to give you an idea, it's not just him talking about things he liked. He also talks about, you know, artifacts and things he finds and what he thinks about certain pictures and kind of like an overall so it's it's more critical than anything else but it still gives you a balanced look at least to a large degree of what he thinks on about uh the p20 pro so definitely check that video out it's up there um and then we uh we decided to play some god of war on the samsung q9f and um it looked pretty good, man. It looked, <laughs> and the game is good too. So technically, I was thinking of doing a God of War review. I know a lot of people have done it out there. I was like, no, I'm just gonna just play and show you guys on the TV so you guys can see how it is. Uh, and then we did our first uh, re uh, episode review roundup of Westworld season two, episode one. Uh, check it out, myself, Lou, and Andrew Cam. We do that every Sunday, 10, 15, 10, 30 uh p.m right after westworld uh, airs so you can join us then uh we also are going to have another um live sh um live review it's a spoiler review of avengers infinity war it's going to happen tonight at 6 p.m so if you've watched the movie come join us we can discuss all the juicy details who died who didn't die what happened is thanos really a bad guy is he the best villain is he the worst villain you name it <laughs> bring all of that discussion, spend time, and we can discuss. Um, in terms of what we also have next week, um, I oh shoot, I just forgot. <laughs> I was thinking of my there's a lot of stuff going on, yeah. There's, there's a good. bunch of things going on. Uh, uh, again, we're trying to keep a schedule of giving you videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, so let me know if that if you like that or if you want to change it. You know, we've dropped down from having videos every day. Um, and we do about three videos a week. So um, anyway, guys, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate everyone for chiming in the chat uh, this week. It's been fun. I know we didn't spend too much time asking uh, guys questions in chat. Um, but uh, Kyle Ruggles, can you shoot in 40 MP raw? Uh, it's not 40 MP. It doesn't really matter. Raw files, it's just going to capture in raw. And it's about... Uh, 40 megabytes the file size and when you process it, it's about 125 uh for the raw files for the huawei p20 pro so it's just about capturing the most amount of information it's not necessarily the megapixel size but thank you very much uh definitely check out mr juan bagnell on some gadget guy you can find him on youtube twitter instagram uh facebook also he is part of the new york live uh show with um treasure Hershberger, thursdays at 1 p.m eastern uh, you can catch him there, see all the fun stuff they both have, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, also, Mr. Warren Bowman, who left earlier, you can find him uh, on bw1.com, on his website, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all on the web. 
check out this content. And uh, for myself and Sam, it is Board at Work, uh, Board at Work on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, as well as also the website. Subscribe to all the channels. Thank you very much. And always enjoy entertainment. Bam.